Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Sprite Packer. As you can see here in our project, we have a bunch of textures, uh, some sprites and some sprite sheets. So let's go ahead and make an example scene using our crates here. So let's just move them around a little bit and I will duplicate these to make the scene a bit more complex. Now let's say we want to add a UI to our scene. So let's right click UI and then add an image. Let's set the image to our purple sprite here. And then let's uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this. Let's just make the next one red. Let's duplicate the first one, move over here. And then so on. So now this is an example game. Uh, obviously yours is going to look much better than this, but if we look at the stats window you can see we have 16 draw calls. So if you have a really complicated scene you may be looking at 100 draw calls which is pretty unacceptable and it's going to waste a lot of performance especially on mobile devices where it's very important. So to reduce the draw calls what we have to do is pack all of these textures and sprites into a single texture and this is kind of difficult to do using Unity normally you have to like pack it yourself using Photoshop or something and then use a sprite editor to like draw rectangles around stuff so that's why I created sprite packer so to use this go to any directory in your project right click go to create and then click on sprite atlas now we can name the sprite atlas let's call it my cool atlas now let's go to our textures and then we need to drag them into the add textures box here so let's drag the crate in drag the crate to. Now you'll notice that if I try and add multiple crates, like if I select two or three, you'll see the inspector here changes and I can no longer see the texture packer. So if you want to add multiple uh, textures like this, just click the, the uh, sprite packer here and then click on the add textures box and then you'll see a new window pops up and this window is always going to stay there. So now if I select all the crates, you see I can just drag them here and then they'll be added to our sprite packer here. Uh, also you can just drag and drop the whole directory if you want and then if I do this you'll see all of the sprites get added. So now that that's done, we need to click the update button. This is going to update the sprite atlas texture. So now that we've done that, if I click select here, you'll see this is our sprite texture atlas. As you can see, if we open the sprite editor you can see it contains all of our sprites and they've now been packed into one single texture but if you look at the stats window here you'll see it still says 16 draw calls this is because all of these sprites here are still using the old sprites the ones outside of our sprite atlas so to replace them what we have to do is first let's save the scene let's call this oops my cool scene and then let's select our sprite atlas here and let's click the link button. Now the link button is going to replace all of these sprites. These are the old sprites, you see they're unpacked, with the new sprites which are the packed ones. This is going to replace in our scene, in our other scenes, in our prefabs and in everything. So let's just click link sprites. Now as if by magic, if you look at the draw calls it's now three and if I select some of the crates like this crate and if you click on the sprite, you'll see it's now using the packed sprite. Now the reason why it's three draw calls rather than one is because the blue background here is one draw call, the main scene here with all the crates is one draw call, and the UI is a separate draw call. So to combine that's three draw calls, and that's the minimum we can get for this kind of scene. So now let's look at some more advanced things. If you look at the uh, spin texture here, you'll see that we have a animated uh, spinning, I don't know, particle effect I guess. And if you look at the individual sprites, you'll see that there's a lot of white space around it. If I go through the animation, you'll see it spins around perfectly, but there's a lot of wasted texture space. And normally if you wanted to use this kind of sprite in your game, uh, you would have to slice it in a grid like this. Uh, thus keeping all of the white space and you would waste lots of texture space 
Now you could go to each one and click trim, go to this one, trim, trim, and so on. But if you do this, you actually lose the center point. If you look, the pivot point is always in the center of the sprite. Maybe you can manually move it like this. Oops, but you're always going to get it slightly off and it's going to look really bad in your game. So what Sprite Packer does is it reads this texture and trims all of this transparency away and it keeps the original pivot point which is in the center. So if I have a look at the packed texture here, you see the Michael Atlas, let's look at the sprite editor. You'll see that all of these, um, this animated particle, you see that the white space has been trimmed away but the pivot point always remains in the center. So that saves you lots of time and saves you lots of texture memory which is very useful on mobile devices. And uh, also if we go to the sprite packer here, you see we have a bunch of settings. Now if you click the X, obviously this is to remove a texture. Uh, if you click X it marks it as red, that means next time you click update here, the texture is going to be removed. Also you can click select here, this is going to select the original sprite texture. Uh, next we have the find, this is going to find all the packed sprites. Uh, which isn't so important for this one, but if I select, say, the bunny here, you see the original bunny sprite has four sprites, so if I click find, you'll see it finds all four packed bunny sprites. Now some additional settings, if I open the, let's say, the create texture here, you'll see we have a pad style setting. So the padding is how the border around the sprite is treated. So let's take uh, this crate. So this is using crate number one. It may be hard to see, but if you look right at the edge of the texture, there's a slight smooth transition between solid color and transparency. Uh, if we look at the crate here, you see the pad style is set to transparent. So if we change this to clamp, and you see it's gone yellow, that means it's been modified. So if we click update, all of the modifications will be up, uh, applied. Now if you look at the edge here, you'll see suddenly the transition is now solid, straight to tran uh, transparent. There's no longer a gradient there. So this uh, setting is very, very useful if you have a tiling background. Uh, this means that you won't have any seams between it, because if you just have a standard transparent edge, then uh, tiling textures won't work, because the solid color will bleed into transparency. So Sprite Packer makes this kind of sprite very easy to set up. Also, you'll notice that there's another setting here, the uh, repeat. This is very good if you're using uh, tiled sprites in the new UI system. Also, if your scene has like uh, tiling repeating backgrounds, that's very, very useful. Also, you notice the pad size setting. So if I go to the Sprite Atlas, you'll see I have MIP maps. So if I increase the level, you'll see the uh, texture size gradually decreases. But as it decreases, you'll notice that the color between the sprites bleeds over. Uh, this is very noticeable if your game has a camera that can zoom out. Like if I can zoom out lots, you'll see the mip map uh, v uh, level gradually increases. So if I don't have any padding, then the color of this crate will bleed over to the next crate, which, which may not be so noticeable in this case, but let's say your other crate is pink and this crate is black or something then the edges of uh, the crates is going to turn pink or black and it's going to look very bad. So that's why you need to have the pad size controller. Uh, also you can override the pivot or the custom border settings. And also we have a very cool setting here, the auto update setting. If you enable this, whenever you modify a sprite, uh, the actual texture, let's say I don't like this crate color and in Photoshop I uh, change it to like red or something. As soon as I hit save and go back to Unity, if I have that uh, auto update setting enabled, then as soon as it happens, it's going to look like this, a re-import. You see the Atlas texture gets updated automatically. So that means uh, you can update your Atlas artwork very, very easily. And uh, that pretty much covers it for the main features of Sprite Packer. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask 
uh, on the main forum thread or reply to this video. Thanks for watching.